here we're starting a new section of metaprogramming and uh, it goes into the big picture. So kind of a preview of what's to come in the next few weeks. Um, this was kind of a really eye-opening chapter. Um, I like to think of it as sort of the meat of uh, the advanced R book and where we like really get into some of the more interesting aspects of uh, advanced programming. Um, so this will be kind of a, just an overview and preview of what to expect in the next few weeks. Um, and then we'll like really get into the details in the next few chapters. Um, so what is metaprogramming? Um, it's an idea that code is data uh, that can be inspected and modified programmatically. Um, yeah, this is this is kind of a big idea in and of itself, and it really uh, shows itself in different aspects of our programming that you have definitely used, but may not be aware that it's metaprogramming. Uh, for instance, it allows you to write out uh, library tidyverse instead of using quotations. Uh, it can be used for uh, converting R and dplyr code into uh, actual SQL code, um, a bit of a more advanced uh, aspect of metaprogramming. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a really rich topic and and definitely something that um, it's going to be going to show up in the next few chapters. Uh, in addition to metaprogramming, there's uh, the concept of uh, non-standard evaluation. Uh, it's closely related to uh, the metaprogramming concept. Um, uh, this term, which is commonly used to describe the behavior of our function, it can, it's prog problematic. Uh, NSC is actually a property of the argument of a function. Uh, so talking about NSC functions is a little sloppy. Um, yeah, I think in, I looked at some of the past advanced R cohorts. And um, I think one of them said if, if uh, metaprogramming is like, like the language, uh, non-standard evaluation is kind of like an adverb. Or it's, it's related in a way, but not exactly. So the, the chapter big picture covers uh, like four like four or five main ideas that I'm gonna cover. Uh, the first one is that code is data. Um, so again, you can capture it, you can compute on it like any other type of data. Um, which can be a really a uh, really powerful concept for some of the more advanced stuff we'll get into later this section. Um, a couple of the uh, couple of the functions from I believe the R lang package uh, express expression and n expression allows you to uh, capture the code as data. Um, expression lets you capture code you typed, and an expression is an, another function, but it captures the code you passed to a function. Uh, Hadley said, think of it as enriched expression. Um, and in a few slides, I'll show you kind of the difference between these two as well. Another concept, uh, big picture concept, is that code is a tree. 
uh, pretty much every programming language also has this concept. Uh, it's often called the abstract syntax tree or AST. And in the, excuse me, in the lobster package, uh, the function AST will actually print out the tree structure of your code. Uh, so here we can see it even with, um, even with functions like uh, the multiplication or addition, uh, it can be it can be mapped out as a tree. Like on the left, uh, if you have you know more advanced function, um, such as on the right, it will it will map it out in a tree like uh, function, and then the more advanced you get, um, it will include several branches or uh, like the plus sign that that's a uh, branch off of the main tree. So these are these are a couple of simple examples, but uh, the more advanced or the more complex code that you have, the bigger uh, your tree. Uh, so one of one of the other um, big concepts, one of the other sections in the chapter, is that code can also generate code. Um, I've actually been uh, working with this in my own package, um, where uh, these expressions and these uh, Two exclamations, which is the uh, bang bang operator, um, are used throughout the package in the code. Um, so it's it's pretty fascinating, and it's an easy way to uh, condense code and and make it um, it can be more readable, especially if you have uh, uh, longer lines of code, you don't want to keep repeating it. So in this example, uh, we have two expressions, xx and yy. Uh, we can generate more code using those expressions uh, uh, at the bottom. So that's, that's an easy way to um, to sort of simplify your code or, or uh, use it to generate more code. Uh, yeah, so I, the, the two exclamations are the, it's the bang bang, and I'm having trouble thinking of uh, what the other word for it is now, but that is also in the book. Okay, so I told you that I would have an example of expression versus an expression. Uh, so suppose we have uh, two functions, f1 and f2. One uses uh, expression, one uses an expression. Uh, so if you pass a plus b to f1, uh, the expression will just return x. Uh, the n expression will actually return uh, the argument you gave to that function. So uh, so yeah, that's, that's the enhanced part of expression. Uh, so depending on your needs, uh, you may use expression or n expression. Uh, any any questions? I someone may be off mute. Okay. 
Okay, someone may have just accidentally unmuted. Uh, the next, uh, the next big idea, uh, evaluation can run code. Um, so the eval function comes from the base package, and you can evaluate expressions. Uh, the powerful idea here is that you can tell it what environment to uh, run the expression in. Uh, so here we have this same expression, but two different environments. So the result, you get two different results based on those values in the environment. Um, so this, this could be a helpful idea if you need to specify an environment um, because otherwise the, the evaluation and the expression will uh, default by using the global environment. So that's kind of cool that you can specify it in that way. Uh, this might be the last big idea. Um, again, I wanted to give kind of a brief overview of the main topics and the big ideas. And then uh, we'll definitely have enough time and, and room for discussion to like definitely dive into these ideas for the uh, future chapters that cover these topics uh, in more depth. Uh, but th th kind of the last one uh, that I go into is is closures or uh, quote closures is kind of the I think I want to say portmanteau is the right word for that. Um, so I'm not sure if you've uh, read this chapter or not, but uh, the idea for this function is uh, you pass a data frame and an expression uh, inside the function. It sets A to 1000 and then uh, evaluates that expression. Um, and so here we have, so we create this function we go into the console, uh, create our data frame, and then outside of the function, we assign 10 to A. And so, you know, you would think that, you would think that passing an expression, uh, X plus A would lend itself to, uh, you know, not not this result. You would you would expect something else uh, where uh, you'd get eleven, twelve, and thirteen instead, um, because because you set a. But the the problem here is that um, you're using uh, an expression when if you're expecting the user to uh, be able to set the parameters outside of uh, the function, uh, this is where uh, closures come in handy. Or So you'd be using nquo function instead of the uh, an expression. Uh, so this allows this allows the person on the other end to be able to uh, set their own parameters instead of having it be defined by the function, like hard coded. Uh, so that's kind of that's kind of a simple example. 
uh, again, the difference being an expression versus end quo. And I believe that, I forget what chapter goes into closures, but I think it's like maybe chapter 18 or chapter 20. Um, so that's a little taste of uh, closures and, and, and the end quo function uh, and why you might want to use that versus uh, an, ooh, excuse me, an expression. Um, I think that is, that might be the last slide. Um, I thought this was going to be a quick one. I wasn't sure if it would be um, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, but uh, this is kind of the overview and, and the big ideas. I would be interested in uh, if anyone has like thoughts on this chapter or uh, just questions in general about uh, the presentation. So Trevin, maybe one one small thing um, is could 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 you remind me what eval tidy does as as opposed to to eval? Oh uh yeah that's a that's a good question. Um I, I can I think, look it up. I, I just uh, was curious if you happen to happen to have uh worked through that, yeah. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, eval tidy like does some of those like evaluation parameters automatically. Uh like maybe yeah, I, I want to say like it does it does stuff automatically versus just regular eval, um, where you don't have to worry about creating. Um, I want to say expression or or um, closures, but uh, I'm not sure if that's exactly correct. But I think it. I think the general idea is that it uh, does some of the heavier lifting on the front end or back end for you versus eval. That's, uh, yeah, that's my understanding. Do you, um, sorry, do you know why um, I should use a, a, an eval function inside a function? Um, what's the purpose for, for doing that? Oh, uh, when to use when to use that inside a function? Yeah, yeah. Because I, um, I thought that that would be useful to evaluate a function, but like if I want to check. How uh, something um, I can use this eval functions, but put them inside the function. But what, what? Why is that? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Um, this might have been the only example um, that I had in my slides where it used that um, eval. So, so Federico, your, your question was why, why would you want to do that? Or when would you want to do that? Yeah, I mean, uh, why? Is that, is that just an example to see uh, some, I don't know, some comparisons? Because uh, I thought that there were like debugging functions why should put them inside a function that so i mean here's here's i i've worked with some of this um i guess the things that we're going to see in this section before um 
I, although I don't claim to have, you know, a good, despite that, I don't claim to have a good handle on this, but, um, you know, my basic understand, well, like one use case might be where the user passes something to the function um, that either, well, so, so like you may have the sequence of things like the, the, the user of the, of the function provides something to an argument of a function, which may not, um, which may not be like, let's say you're working with a, a data frame, may not be the, may not be like a bare name of a, a column in the data frame. Maybe it's a, it's a string or a regex or something, right? Um, and so then, then you need to have that thing inside of, inside of, uh, like inside of the function, you would basically need to, um, you may not want to evaluate that, th the, the argument that the user's passed immediately. You may want to defer the evaluation of that. Um, and so like, is, if you want to defer it, then you need to have a, like a, a mechanism for like evaluating it. And it could be like the thing itself. So the thing that the user passed to the function, or it could be that you as a developer take the thing that someone has passed to the function and then modify it somehow. So it's kind of like Trevin, the idea is Trevin's is like data is code somewhat. So it's like, imagine you you have some function that just computes the, the mean of every single column, right? And maybe you want to have a, a you know, create a data frame where um, you have the column names with prepended like, you know, mean underscore, right? Um, so that might be a way in which you would, sorry, I feel like this is very confused. It might be better if, I had a code example to, to, to share, but I mean, like my understanding is like, you, you know, you may want to, a function may take an argument that needs to be somehow processed by the function. And then at some stage in the fun function executing its business logic, um, you, you might want to evaluate that thing um, or the, like some variant of that thing. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Yeah, so, uh, so you, you're saying that um, um, I might need to evaluate something inside the function to process something else. And so I can use this eval, they are of different types, so they have different uh, uh, outcomes, let's say like that, and might be uh, needed to evaluate a part of a function, like uh, um, inside another uh, function. Mm, I, I, I've seen what you said somehow, but uh, I still don't understand it clearly. Because, um, so maybe uh, thinking about something uh, um, a bit more complicated or uh, advanced, um, I can imagine that, but otherwise I would use that just for debugging and to evaluate some results and say if um, the results of some fun other functions with this result. I feel like one use case might become clear in the quasi quotation chapter. Um, um, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've definitely, definitely used stuff like that in, in some, some of my own, some of my own functions um, in, in, in the past. Uh, it looks like uh, the ggplot package uses this um uh, i guess framework uh especially with the a aes function um it looks like that takes advantage of um using a or using the eval um to to make it useful um can you something that to see, to visualize, and maybe or a uh, uh, fast link and some else is sharing. Yeah, um, it looks like uh, the R Lang documentation is uh, is really helpful for 
getting into more of these uh, more of this information. Let me let me see if I can put this in the chat. Uh, wherever the chat is. Here we go. Yeah, so the R Lang documentation looks is pretty good and um, can definitely is be there, helpful. Is there like, like the print function, something like the print function. Uh, can you say that again, please? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Can you hear me? Is there something like the, the similar uh, to the print function that like releases a value, but instead of just releasing the value, it calculates something, so evaluates something? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. my, my audio went out. Okay. Yeah. So I think there are a couple of good use cases. Maybe I'll um I'll I'll see if I can Google this and drop it in the chat. But um I feel like there's a nice explanation of this. There there was I think the beginnings of a tidy eval book. Um, but I think that got that idea got um I didn't come to fruition. Um, um but but nevertheless I think it had a few helpful examples about how how one would like basically some patterns in which one might want to um quote quote function like kind of fun, the, the inputs of a function user um, so, um kind of like diffuse them i guess in, in the jargon that they use in the book and in our lang um documentation and then evaluate them later um so there's some nice, nice examples of that. Let me see if I can find that and drop it in the chat. Trevin, uh, can, can, can you hear us? You know. Okay. Yeah, I can uh, hear you now. Yeah. I was curious about the the, the 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 example that you mentioned about ggplot. So where I can find it? Um, let me. I had that link right uh, up. Let me let me see if I can. Yeah, I believe they. They use this, but um, here we go. I found this one. I put in the oh, chat. I sent that to Arthur. Uh, Did did Hadley say that he's working on the tidy evaluation book? I, I forget from the meeting last week where that was at. I, I think it was a tidy verse design book. So I think it was more design principles uh, than than um uh tidy eval. Okay. At least that's what I remember. And I think he was yeah. talking about that at uh, our studio conf too. It's uh, it's hard to keep up with all the all those books, and I can't imagine how he keeps up with it. Yeah, I feel like this is an, a really interesting chapter. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate it, Trevin, your kind of like compact presentation and, and, and setting the scenes and conveying the big messages. I, I think, at least to my mind, they came across really well. But at the same time, I feel like maybe the frustrating part, not about your presentation, but about maybe the book itself is, I mean, I know that these are going to be developed in futures. It, it seemed like there weren't weren't so many examples because, you know, I, 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 I'm, I feel like I'm like, Federica is kind of saying for herself that, you know, I really need an example to chew on to, to really properly understand the, the idea. And I, I, there were some in the book, but they were a few steps removed from maybe practical usage of the thing, if, the, if that makes sense. Yeah, that definitely. Um, uh, yeah, I felt like this chapter was definitely light and uh, the actual code and there were, there were no, uh, exercises in this chapter either, um, for like to practice or to expand on, uh, the sections. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree that it was kind of light in that respect. Um, I very briefly looked forward, but, but not too much, but um but yeah that was that was interesting that it was so light in the in the code aspect yeah thank you but one one more thing that i am i found interesting is this uh, way to uh draw a tree of a function mm with this love uh, package and the ASP function. That's nice then. Uh, are you like specifically how to draw a tree with the AES function? Yeah. No, I'm, 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 I'm not, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I said that, that that's interesting uh, to, uh, yeah, uh, how to use it basically? Yes, I, I thought that was like um, to use it as a, a diagram or something like that. So you can use it with your functions and see how they they relate to each other. I don't know. That's interesting. I said. Uh, yeah, I think I think you can feed it pretty much anything any function and it will draw the diagram out um i believe it might have been cohort one had a few more examples of uh of using the lobster function and i want to say that one of them might have been the aes function uh but yeah there there were a few more examples in cohort one where they do draw draw out trees using the lobster function so and that's that was also another quick um a, a quick session that i think that only lasted that video is like maybe 18 or 19 minutes um but yeah there's there's a few more examples in that video if you wanted to check that out is that course one the first course yeah, the, the cohort one. Um, it's it's on the it's on the R for DS YouTube uh, channel playlist, and I believe uh, I don't remember the link, but the link of all the slides and videos you can find it on there as well. So, so Trevin, sorry, I, I didn't have a chance to really read the book very care the chapter um, very very much this week. But did you get a so from your presentation? You know, I, I'd seen kind of the lobster package in action in this chap. I guess when I previously kind of scanned this book, um, I, I think I broadly understand you know how 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 it uh, works. But one question I have, you know, I think you mentioned in your presentation that you know R is unique and that we one could programmatically modify elements of the of the uh, abstract syntax tree. Did this chapter give any indication of how that might be done or is, is that 
do you think that's kind of coming coming soon you know in terms of uh it'll be further developed in subsequent chapters i just kind of wanted to like better understand you know how 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 this works I, you know i think the concept kind of exists well i think this kind of exists in other places like i was uh very briefly looking into lua filters you know for for kind of a pre-processing uh, uh things for um Porto or R markdown, and and it seems like there's also this ability to you know, mutate the the abstract 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 syntax tree of 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 a mm -hmm. document with a Lua a Lua filter. But I didn't know you know how like how this is done in in R, and then kind of like what the targets of this change of the elements of the tree, um, what they are. Not sure if you have any insights. Yeah, I'm not sure if it covered that quite yet in this chapter. I, I remember reading uh, that that point that they brought up in, in this chapter, but don't really remember or recall that they really dived into it beyond that. Um, uh, what let's say uh, Lua filter is that a um from a different programming language or like a yeah so i i'm not going to do this justice because i only have a very fragmentary understanding of this but i mean lua is another language um and uh it it seems like uh you know pandoc i believe is is using lua behind the the scenes to sort of like scan scan a document and then it can make some changes to 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 the document so sort of like it can scan a markdown file i guess and identify the elements of the tree i guess thinking about maybe like pseudo like i guess the document object model um you know in, in html uh and then can maybe make some some systematic changes to like parts of that tree that's that's my really probably incorrect but fragmentary understanding of the thing oh huh, yeah that's that's interesting. I don't know if I've uh, heard of Lua before, um, but it sounds it sounds similar. Um, yeah, I want to say, yeah, but it does it does feel like it's still like a unique um, a unique power to have for a programming language. Uh, I think in the second cohort might have brought up that like this is an advantage that R has over Python, uh, for example. Um, so yeah, I'll be interested to see what what this looks like in uh, the future chapters, because I'm assuming that it will be covered later this section. Definitely interested in that too. Uh, to, to see whether like the abs, the changing the abstract syntax tree is sort of like the tree of R itself or or of other languages. Because I, I was kind of wondering if it was setting the stage for kind of quasi quotation and evaluation or translating R code into into code of other other languages. Anyway, I oh. I, I, I wasn't really sure what how that fed into the rest of the chapters, having only made a very cursory scan of the chapters yeah that that'll be interesting to see how it, how it fits um yeah w one other thing i i didn't cover um uh i covered how um r can be uh converted over into SQL code. Um, there was more examples in the chapter on how it can be uh, used to generate like HTML. Uh, so that was that was pretty interesting as well. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely I definitely thought this was one of my one of my more favorite chapters and uh, learning more about the 
uh, expressions and n expressions and just some of the uh, the bang bang operators and some of the more general uh, meta programming topics is is definitely something that's going to uh, make my R programming language it, uh, abilities like much more uh, advanced. Yeah, completely agreed. I'm, I'm, <laughs> to, to, to me, like in a certain sense, this was, uh, this is the thing I was looking, looking forward to most about, about the book. Um, even though I've kind of dabbled in some of these things, I don't feel like I have a very good handle on this. And also like, I'm looking forward to maybe the opportunity, um, to somehow maybe during presentations, like update the information a little bit to reflect how things have changed because I, I, I think as uh, as John was pointing out um, uh, you know moderator John um, uh, it, 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 I think that after the it was only after I, I the book came out that, a, uh, that our lane came out but I think this is generally HMIS Oh, sorry. Um, uh, someone came in the office real quick, and I forgot I was off mute. No worries. <laughs> you know, I was just saying, like, it might it might be a good opportunity to kind of um, see how this uh, meta programming stuff has evolved over time, because the book the book seems to describe a certain era, and uh, I think things have changed. I mean, I think, you know, Hadley was even talking about that during during last week's session, where I think he was saying for for most people in most use cases, you know, at the limits, like, don't worry about too much of this end quo uh, thing for, with Arlang. It's just use, 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 you know, embrace operator, you know, this uh, kind of like double, double curly brackets and, and you're good. Yeah, I, the the bit of reading I was doing on the R Lang uh, website documentation was went into that as well. Just saying, basically, like you probably won't be using NQL very much. Uh, then explained some more. Uh, so I feel like that is probably a good resource as well as. Uh, maybe maybe there's other Hadley videos out there explaining some of the more advanced uh, topics. Um, do we know who's uh, Go ahead, Trevin. Oh, I was just asking. Uh, I wasn't sure who is presenting next week. I think it's me, and I think I might be presenting two weeks in a row, if I'm not mistaken. I think, I think I signed up for the quasi. Yeah, ex quasi quotation expression side. Oh, uh, sorry. Next week, uh, next week we have off, and then uh, the following week we start up again. Got it. I sign. I sign up for expression. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Well, uh, yeah. You you all get to uh, go into the into the meet in the details of this chapter. So I'm definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to that. Yes. Okay. So we'll test. <laughs> so we missed just a uh, uh, volunteer for the last chapter. So we do. <laughs> Excellent. So the, uh, the, the last chapter is quite challenging. Yeah, translating the code plus <laughs> plus. Okay. But anyway, let, let's don't think about that. <laughs> we, we are a bit of 
like we have time to think about it. Okay, so thank you very much. I think we can, if we don't have any other questions, I don't know. You have any questions? Other things to talk about maybe? No? Um, I don't think so on my end, but I, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, the next presentations, especially if if you uh, bring some outside examples or or explore like more of a deeper dive, definitely. Okay. Just just out of curiosity, um, I, I was wondering if anyone has used uh, in any of the, I guess, tools from these chapters and in, in practice. I guess maybe in short, kind of used our used our lang um, for you know quoting expressions and unquoting expressions. Uh, I've I've encountered it in my code and, and uh, packages uh, at work, uh, but m mostly I'm not sure about the uh, closures, but definitely uh, like the bang bang operator and uh, the expressions. Yeah, I've, I've not, used I've used them, but it's been a long it's been a while. Yeah, and is the is the dot like dot data or or dot whatever is that uh, data masking? Yes. Uh, yeah, I've also encountered a lot of that in my code as well. So this this uh, section is going to be very very helpful. All right. I I don't have uh, I don't think I have anything else. Okay. So thank thank you very much. Thank you so, very much for. No, I just. Yeah. Okay, I just want to ask a quick one. I was thinking next week we are not meeting next week because of the daylight saving time. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a week uh, uh, week off. So maybe. Uh, Think about if we have other questions to talk about the when we meet next time, uh, as well as with uh, doing the, the next chapter with all of any. And so it, it's all for today. Thank you very much, and uh, see you in two weeks' time. Okay, bye. All right, bye. Thank bye. you all. Bye. Thanks Thank for you. bearing with my uh, tech problems. <laughs>